Hello everybody, just a quick live video for our pop on tonight because normally do a what's called Wednesday pre-recorded video but tonight I thought well let's go live just a 10-15 minutes or so and we'll see what we can do with this little kingfisher. So what I want to do, I'm thinking about adding some basic kind of wash tones on the kingfisher's head to begin with and that's just by using a mixture of um, cerulean blue, which is what I'm doing here, using my old kind of watercolour mixing brush. Hello Sue, nice to hear, nice to see you actually, nice to see you on mine. It's very cold outside tonight. So cerulean blue, and some little bits, I think, in this case, of indigo. And I want this probably to like a, like a milky kind of consistency to begin with on that. Now, okay. Uh, let's have a look for the size 5. Here we go, let's get some paper and make a start. Okay, if you see a bit of a flickering going on on the screen, you know it's because of the lights, okay? It is night time after all, so bear that in mind. Right, here we go. So what I want to do is add a first layer of colour just onto the head. I'm not going to wash it down first of all, because this is going to get covered over anyway, a lot of this. But parts of this will still show through. So very lightly, get some more paint. I'm also thinking about the direction this all goes in as well. So it's not so it's not going in the wrong direction. When I'm looking at the direction that the the feathers go, that's just above the eye. And then down the side. And around the back of the head. I'm gonna pull one or two out actually as well, just just a few little ones here and there. And then just soften that down just a little bit. And that goes down, that's where the orange area is down below. And then just down to the side. So this is just an off the cuff video. So uh, please excuse me, because I say it is live. I do have the occasional live one from here on because now we've got a bit of a better broadband facility. We can do that. Well, hey, it's about time as well, I think. Okay, so let's just continue down the back of the head. The thing about not wetting it down first as well is that you find it will dry that much quicker. Especially underneath these lights here as well. So these lights are quite warm. So I've got two lights on the go here. So I can illuminate it enough so you guys can see it. So I say this is cerulean blue and indigo. I'm going to pull a few out to the back of the head. I'm also looking at the direction these go as well. I want to make sure they all go the right way. Just to the back there and a few more out. I mean that'll do to begin with just for adding the colour on. And then obviously on top of that once it's nice and dry I can start building all that lovely detail over the top. Hello Mel. <laughs> I'm back. <coughs> Excuse me. Yes, I'm back. Back online. See, I can't. I can cut the coughs out when I'm doing a video. We see normally, but when it's down to something like this, help. <laughs> I can't cover the microphone up because so that's kind of hooked away just in front of me at the moment. I think for this area, I'm going to just dampen this down a little bit, just for some clean water, not too wet. <laughs> So how many people got on board today? Oh, we've got nine people on. Hello, everybody. You can say hello if you want to. Sue and Mel said hello. So who else is on there, please? I've gone live for you at the moment. So I'm going live, as I mentioned, for probably another 15 minutes. Well, 15 minutes in all, 15, 20, oh, I don't know. We'll see anyway. We'll see how we get on. Just a bit of fun, really. Because it is Watercolour Wednesday. And as you all know, usually on Wednesday, I tend to release a little video or a little clip from one of my main Patreon videos. That plays up there a lot. On, uh, on how I do some of the techniques. So today, I thought, well, it doesn't matter. I hope you don't mind me going live. At the moment here, looking at the time, it's now 7.14, precisely. So it depends on where you are. Oh, I'll tell you what I'd love to hear, you know, if you don't mind doing this for me, everybody. So there's a few people on now. Just type where you are, where you're from. Go on. I don't want your postcode. I don't want your, your street address. Just, what country are you in? Or if you're in the UK, you're in Scotland, Ireland. If you're in America, where are you? 
let me know. I'd love to kind of find out. And if you're watching this on catch up, <laughs> sounds like a TV program, doesn't it? If you're, <laughs> if you're watching this on catch up, then therefore bear in mind that I do carry on watching this. I do play it back. I do look at people's comments. Oh, hello, Marie. Marie Heard is watching. Um, hello, Valerie. Good day. <laughs> Who else is on there? I'm trying to see, so bear with me moving the phone a minute, because obviously I've got that directly above me. So I'm stretching high. Hi, Joy. Joy from Chile. Hello, Joy. Right, so that's two cuz. Well, I've already got some of the detail underneath from when I had a play with this the other day. I want this to dry now, and then once it's nice and dry, I can start thinking about adding a little bit of detail over the top. But I think, I'm uh, thinking about the beak now. So if I just move my palette around so you can just about see it, Ah, hello, Jeanette from oh, Brunswick, Canada. Hello there. Long way away from me. So I'm going to go for a little bit of French Ultramarine, I think, initially. So just think about getting a wash of colour on the beak itself. Just so we got something from there. Hi, Lee. Hi. Uh, what's that? Eastbourne. So a wash of colour. So that's going to be French Ultramarine. So I want this probably to like a like a milky, watery, milky mix, something like that. And then over the top of that, I'm going to go with a little bit of Lamp Black. I know. It's one of those things which I use. I do use Lamp Black as well. So uh, just kind of let you know. Oh, thank you, Joy. It's very kind of you. <laughs> I love your art. Now, everybody remember one thing, that when I'm doing this, there's about a 30-second delay. So you see me painting 30 seconds ago, if you know what I mean, in the past. So I'm in the past, but only just though, only just. I don't know why that is actually. Well, I'll tell you what I need to do before I do anything else. I'm going to go for my fine double zero brush. I want to very lightly... Can somebody let me know when 15 minutes is up, please? Because I haven't got a clock on me at the moment. I meant to set one up. Thank you. <laughs> very lightly. Just outline the inside of the beak. I just want to work out where things go. That's the top there. So it kind of dips in that area there on the beak. That's the central part of the beak, just where the two parts join. Now where's that nostril gone? There it is. So a bit of a nostril in there. And I think that's probably plenty in there. I just want to work out where things go before I start going in with a colour wash over the top. Because these are just the initial washes, as I say, so we can build on top of them. Oh, what paints are we using? Hi, Valerie. Um, the paints I'm using are Winter and Newton. And the ones in question, I think you can see them on the screen. And these are these are my old, 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 very old palette of paints. So these are my half pan paints. And what I tend to do, I don't always just buy a new half pan. I very often get a tube of paint and squeeze it into those pans. Just a bit of fun, you know, because um, it just saves replacing the pans, that's all. A bit lazy, really, I suppose. <laughs> but that's what I tend to do anyway. So Winter Newton, I do use SAA, and I do use um, De La Rowney as well. So I use a variety of paints. So what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to wet the beak. But my main paints, as I say, are Winter Newton. The ones I tend to kind of work on, kind of mostly, you know. So we've got 16 people. Hello, everybody. So we've got people from Canada, from Chile, from the UK, different places as well. So I'm trying to ask people where they're from, just out of interest really. It is interesting when you think something like Facebook can bring us all together, just in a very short space, just a little kind of bit of software on your laptop, on your tablet, on your phone, and then we're all together. <laughs> just having a little bit of fun online. Right, okay. So I wanted to wet that down initially, just so I can just a nice blend effect for the base layer, just for the foundation layer of colour. So I'd say all these layers are going to be just the foundation layer, so I can build on top of those layers as I go along. Right, so I'm going to go for some blacky blue now on here. Now it's dampened down. I'll keep glancing up, by the way. I use, oh, hello, Valerie. Um, I use cold pressed, so it's, it's called a Knot Paper Capitalised, N-O-T, and it's Bockingford. Is one I use, and it's um, 140 pound or 300 300 GSM, so it's a reasonable kind of thickness. But if you're going to use it 
uh, on a regular basis, if you want to completely cover the paper with paint, then you really do need to stretch the paper first. Unless, of course, you buy a watercolour block, which is what I use a lot of the time. This one isn't, by the way, saying that. But I do use watercolour blocks, which um, I prefer to use. Oh, bonjour. Hola. Hello, Catherine. <laughs> Anybody else? I'm trying to see who's on there. Yeah, hi, Catherine. A little bit of Cadmium Orange and a little bit of Scarlet Lake. And I want to pop just a touch of colour, because a bit of colour in this peak just in there as well. Again, this is just that foundation layer. Just so I've got something to kind of work on top of later on. And that'll do initially just for that initial wash of colour. So I think what I want to do is go for my double zero brush. This is getting a bit old, this one now. It's starting to kind of fray apart. I've used it for two paintings, this particular one. And... Uh, because of that, it doesn't last very long. So a little bit of bluey black now. So French ultramarine and lamp black, and I'm gonna start adding some detail. Oh, what's that, Hillary? Sorry, Valerie, just saw your post. Okay. Right, here we go. This should be just about dry enough to kind of work on, to start thinking about, just thinking about adding a little bit of detail in there, and thinking about direction of the brush strokes as well. Now, I'd say the paints I use, say what, which are Windsor and Newton, there's a, a variety of paints on the market, there really is. You know, and there's some very good quality ones out there as well. Little tip I will say to you as well is that if you've got some arty friends who use a different paint to you, then it's worth trying one of those paints out and just see how you get on because you might find different paints will work differently on different papers, etc. etc. So, this paper is pretty good for taking a variety of different paints that I've got here, but as I say, try different papers out and see how you get on, okay? Um, because that does make a massive difference. I always say to people as well, you know, with, when it comes down to buying the materials for your watercolours, always buy the best that you can afford. That's the way I tend to put it, because um, sometimes you can get some very inexpensive products, papers, brushes, and obviously paints, and they don't, they don't give you the effect that you want. And then you're disappointed with the outcome because you think, well, I've got the paint, it's got the paper, why is it not working? And that's because of the quality of the, the, some of the items which you can buy. So bear that in mind. So always buy the best that you can afford, okay? A little bit of advice. Just some little old me. So what else? Let's have a quick look on there. No, nope, nobody other comments on there. 19 people. Hello, everybody. I've come at the right time tonight. So any questions, I'll answer as many as I can. I've got about another five or ten minutes on here, then I need to go then. Okay, I think something's on the telly tonight. I don't know what it was now. <laughs> when do you think I paint all day as it is? So I'll just pop on tonight for you as our watercolour Wednesday. Right, so now I'm going to carry on around the front of the head, thinking about the shape. And that kind of works around there a little bit more. This is just the first layer of detail, bear in mind, so we've got more detail to go on top of this yet. So this is like a, a very light colour, very light tone at the moment. We'll need to add a mid-tone, and then the very darkest of darks over there as well, which I'd like to add. Just kind of give the contrast which we need. You know, some people like to go for light, then dark, then add them, the mid-tones in between, but I like to kind of build it up as I go along. And that's where I tend to work on this. So a little bit more. I think what I'll do, you know, I think I'll, I think I'll add a little bit more around the left hand side of the eye. You can see how fine I'm working with this. Do you want me to zoom in, anybody? Can you see it enough? I can zoom the camera in. Let me know, so I can't tell what you can see all the time. So you can see it, you can see it better than I can. So I'm trying to strain my neck at the moment to see the phone. So if you want to go closer, let me know. I go closer. Right, so barely touching the paper, adding the finest of marks there. These kingfishers are lovely. We've got some kingfishers nearby in one of the rivers, which we have seen on occasions when we've been down to a local bird hide, and it's, um, it's lovely to see them perching on the side of the river bank, waiting to catch the fish, and then just disappear underwater in one light blue flash. We can hear them as well. You can hear them going down the river. And the sound that you hear is like a like a single high-pitched note, which is very good. And then you know there's a kingfisher nearby. Then it's all eyes open, where is it, where is it? So when you do see them, 
it's, uh, it's a bonus. And it is like a blue flash as well, because you've got this bright blue line down the back, like a cerulean blue line down the back of the, between the wings, you know, down the back of the bird itself, which is very interesting to see. Right, okay, what we got? Uh, I don't know, bear with me a minute. Uh, I'm a beginner, so I don't have questions. It's amazing to watch your work. Thank you, Joy. Uh, Murat, so what? Oh, super, thank you. Anybody else? Any more comments? I'd better double check. So I'm going to shake the camera a minute. I'll try and zoom in just a touch, just a little bit more. So bear with me a minute. I'll move things around so you can just see. There we go. Is that any better? A little bit closer. Closer. Okay, there we go. Stop singing, Paul. Right, there we go. So now I'm going to continue around the back of the head for this first layer of detail just to work out where things go. Just kind of position things. Right, we've got another five minutes. I know, time flies, it really does. I'm guessing five minutes anyway, it feels like I've been on ten. I'm trying to limit it to about 15, 20 minutes max. Otherwise, I'm going to get anything else done tonight. <laughs> Right, so I'm going to think about the length of the lines on these. These are quite long down the side as well. So I'm going to add those in. Just a few. Hopefully this is clear enough for you tonight, because I've got no idea of telling. I won't be able to know until I can kind of play it back later on on the computer and see how it goes. I'm going to slightly overlay these, because even though it's very bright blue behind, I want to make sure... I've got a variety of lines to begin with before I start going darker. Because I'm going to use a similar colour for the next one, black and blue. So French Ultimine and Lamp Black. Just go even darker for the back of the head. So now we've got that first layer on. I'm going to do the same around this area here as well. Any more questions there? Hiya Anna. What's the number of your brush? Now, the brush I use, bear with me, I want to get another one. Because it's difficult to show you on this particular one. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> right, here we go. So this is my brush box, so my new brushes a minute. And in here, in here, I sound really posh, don't I? And here, these are my new brushes. Now the ones I tend to use most of all tend to be a double zero, which is this one here, and that's one I've got in my hand. But this brush is now worn away, so the tip is wearing away on there now. You can't tell, but it really is. So double zero, and these are the uh, Winsor Newton Cotsman Series 111, and say that's size zero. But that's a really good brush, and it's a synthetic bristle on this as well. So it's not too bouncy, which gives you a bit more control. I do use the Rosemary Co. brushes as well. Um, I'll go through those on my Patreon channel as well. I've got to do a video, I see the Patreon saying that, on some of the new brushes which I've bought in which I want to show my patrons how they work and we can compare the new brushes with the old brushes and see which is the best. All right, so that's one thing I'm going to definitely do very soon to give us some ideas. Okay, hope you like that. That'll give us some ideas what I'm working with. So a size double zero, and you can go even smaller. If you notice in my box there, there's a, a, a four zero brush as well. It's really, really titchy, very tiny indeed. So I'm going to start adding a few more details now and go on to the bottom. This is obviously a little bit of shorter, sharper strokes. So I'm going to just take a bit of paint off there first of all, just a little bit. And then go even finer with less kind of paint on the brush. Okay, just a few more. And that'll do for that. I'm looking in the direction all the time. I'll say this is just that first layer of detail. Probably got another three or four layers to go over the top of this yet. And as with watercolour, as we all know, any watercolours will know, very often you start from light and work your way all the way to dark. Build up gradually as you go along. There's never any rush, never rush, never hurry. Take your time. Have a break. Hello Liz, how are you? That's all right Anna, no problem at all. You've got to have a, everybody remember there's a 30 second delay, okay? From when I talk and you hear it. <laughs> Not a problem. So keeping it as fine as possible, looking at that ultimate direction there, this has got to go a lot brighter than this yet as well. Because the colour I think I'll use on this one, you know, is going to be 
probably a little bit of indigo. Okay, it's my little color chart from my palette. And probably mixed with even intense blue as well. So I want it really bright on there. So every now and then I'll come on live and I'll carry on working on this painting for you. Just bit by bit and I might swap to another painting as well every now and then. I'll do bits in between as well. I can't do too much on this one because I've got a full tutorial on how to paint this particular Kingfisher. And guess where it is? You know very well. It's on my Patreon channel above. Um, so if you want to learn how to paint this, you know where to go. It's all on there. There's about a four hour video all the way through on me chatting away while I'm painting. Explaining every step all the way through, okay? So bear that in mind. Okay. I'll just complete this area down here then I think it's time to say goodbye. Until another day. Or another night. When I make another appearance. <laughs> and say boo. So any last minute questions, please fire away. I'll give it 30 seconds for those questions to come through, okay? Mal, uh, what you got on there? Oh, hi, Liz Allen. Fancy seeing you here. Do you know her somewhere? <laughs> the name of, what was that? Hang on, I'm just going to move the camera a minute. Joy, the name of that blue, please. Okay. Well, uh, let's have a quick look. The blue which I use, Joy, is a, well, I'm using two blues at the moment. So if I show you my palette in there, bear with me. So this color here is a mixture of cerulean blue and indigo, okay? So cerulean blue and indigo, that's the color that you can see on the top of the head at the moment. It's not bright enough yet, it's got to go a lot brighter than that yet. But that's the color I'm currently using. So let's say any last minute questions, we've got 22 people online. I can see that, but I haven't got a counter. And nobody's bothering to tell me I've been on. <laughs> I've got a cut in a minute. Right, okay, so that's going to be down the back. Thinking about the shape all the time. I think what I'll probably do before I go is put a wash of colour on the orange and then we'll call it a night until another day where we'll carry on with a different painting. And maybe this one, I don't know, I've not decided yet. Now the orange colour I want probably is going to be a mixture of cadmium orange so I'm looking at something like this colour here. So cadmium orange maybe, yeah, I think so. And I think just a touch of, I'm guessing, Scarlet Lake. Look at that, that lovely colour. That is a lovely colour, that one. So cadmium orange and Scarlet Lake. The brush will wash out, always wash your brush. And this is for the orange parts on the head at the moment. I'm just going to put this in and then we'll, uh, we'll go then. I'm sorry to tell you. So I'm going to wet the areas first, just dampen those down with some clean water. I can see where I've got to go. So I've got some pencil marks on there so I don't lose my way. Just dampen it down a couple of times so it doesn't dry too quick. A bit down the side of the mouth there as well. Don't leave us, I'm sorry Joy. I have to, I've got to go. <laughs> Sure, there's something on the telly missing tonight. <laughs> I've got no idea what it is though. Ah, oh, dear. Well, thank you very much indeed. I do appreciate it. But right, I'm going to drop some orange in now. Here we go. So, anybody watching this video, as I said earlier on, on catch up when it's not live, but it says it's live, but it's not live, if you know what I mean. Um, you're welcome to put the questions on because I do check all the questions. You know very well. Anybody that follows my work, on a regular basis, know very well that I do reply to just about every single question that I find. Everyone that I find, sometimes I miss them, but I do like to reply to people and even at least say thank you, okay? So um, leave a comment down below, even if I'm not online. I'll catch up with that later on. Right, so that's a little bit of orange colour there, all ready and waiting for when I start adding the details over the top, okay? Right, on that note, I'm going to have to say goodbye. And until next time when we go live, which may be next week, I'll probably go live again next week for you. I'm not going to say a time just yet, so I don't know. <laughs> and uh, until then, I'm going to say adios, mi amigos. Hasta luego. And I'll see you again next time around, okay? So until then, bye-bye for now. And thank you very, very much for watching.